Hello everybody and welcome to the colony, the place where if you understand then you're part of our family, the colony. Day 8, date 18, 2019. Please close the door on the way in. Thank you. I hope you guys are in a good spiritual mood right now. Because we're going to have a very interesting discussion. A very topical discussion. Very informative. Very enlightening. So please get comfortable. And like with any discussion, we started off with the Rashid Portal Passage. Please get your notes, a pencil, or a pen, and let's begin with the Rashid Portal Passage. I come from a small world. The world in which I reside now, along with its sufferings, will not change me. Will not change me. Can you honestly say that you changed? Honestly? Have you changed? Do you want to change? Well, in this case... Everything we've been through since our last colony gathering, have you changed? You notice how automatically you think about the world's sufferings and problems that it holds and the impact that it have on you. If you if you was caught, especially if you was caught up in it, <clears throat> especially if you was caught up in it. Are you the same person? Believe it or not, we feel a little different. We do. We feel a little different. But in a general sense, are you changed? We can't let it change us. We can't. See, we... We have to, as spiritual people, we have to stay the same. It's important that we stay the same. And the meeting that we, and what we discussed today, is going to highlight that in, in a, um, in a more detailish fashion. So, along with the Rashi Portal Passage, we have the Rashi Portal Poem. And that states, my eyes see, we see, but we are blind. My heart beats, but I am dead. With my hands I touch, but I cannot feel. Nonetheless, we're underwater, and yet we... Breathe. I think it's time for us to start breathing. What do you say? We go through so much, so much, and yet we're breathing. Now let's discuss why. For starters, we go through so much head trauma today in today's society. 
we go through so much head trauma. It may not be physical trauma. But it's head trauma because, you see, some things in life are just hard on the eyes. You understand? If you look at a a a, um, a field full of daisies, a field full of daisies, you will get a sensation of peace and an overwhelming of calmness. Well. Dispatched throughout your body, and you will feel amazingly enlightened in some way. <clears throat> On the other hand, if you see a building being torn down or ripped apart, the emotions are different than if you saw that field full of daisies, you see. Because the eyes is our perceptive antenna, in a way. It's like like a, a satellite. Without a satellite, you can't see programs. You can't get any reception. The eyes are like that. Even if you're blind, you still have eyes. You still see. Not everything that that um, not not you know you you don't need eyes for everything. You know, we perceive with our eyes. Rather, if it's our literal eyes or our eyes, our, our spiritual eyes, or a different type of eye, our humanitarian eye, which you don't need spiritual eye or Little eyes, we're still seeing because we're living, so we're perceiving. Today, in today's world, everything is very hard for our seeing, for our, no matter how we see it, it's hard for us. It's very difficult for us. And in this difficulty, we may feel faithless. We may feel this is useless. Why bother? Why bother? Why why bother? Why why bother? Why bother if this wanna come to this? Why bother if this wanna come to this? Why bother if it's going to come to this? Some people say, why bother Why bother reaching out for certain dreams and goals if it's all going to come to what we're coming to nowadays? Why bother? Well... One of the reasons why you can bother, rather than saying why bother, is that the fact that we don't know what the future holds. So we don't know what tomorrow will bring. But thanks to the spiritual scriptures, we understand what tomorrow will bring. We understand. Because it tells us that it will carry on with badness. Just like today. And the scriptures go on to say, don't be concerned about tomorrow. You know why? <clears throat> For the like, the scripture says, it will be bad tomorrow. <laughs> you see? There's no shades of gray with God. It's either going to be good tomorrow or bad. See, God knows that the only way the world is going to be right is under his leadership. Other than that, the Bible says it's going to be bad. So the Bible is telling us, the scripture is telling us, the Quran, whatever you believe in, whatever you, is that tomorrow is going to be bad. It's telling us the future in a way. Tomorrow will be bad, hands down. So it tells us not to be concerned about it. You know why? Because it's going to be bad. So never worry about it. 
Now, of course, let's take a break. Let's take a break. And let's move over to a portion of the colony that's dealing with something that we string along here as we gather together. And that is the Amish women, Rashid's Amish women. Let that stay on the screen for a few seconds, because I think people got an attitude problem around here. I think, I'm not trying, I'm not starting shit. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But I think people got an issue. So let that stay on the screen for a few minutes, so everybody get the point. Let it stay on the screen. In fact, listen to this while you look at it. Don't get too don't that's enough. Don't get too greedy. Don't get too greedy. That's enough. Don't get too greedy. I decided to put the Rashid Portal women around here because I think that's what we need. We need some we need calmness around here. We need to realize that there's people here on the planet Earth that's not going with everything. You understand? And the Amish are just some. It's just the tip of the many variety of people that's here on the planet. That's not going with everything. One thing about society. When you live in your life. You think everybody's doing it. That's how sayings come. Sayings come about. If you're driving in the car with a friend or whatever. And it's like. Why won't you, why won't you just lay your head back on the car seat? That's what the driver say to somebody in a passenger seat. Won't you put your head back on them? And the person say, Oh. The passenger say, Oh, this is better. So then the driver says, Yeah. See it that better? See? You put your head back and relax. Everybody knows that. You see? And once they say that, you feel a certain way, you know, you feel a certain way, I don't know, you feel it in your bones, you know, you feel it, you feel it, you feel something, it's like, it's almost like Holy Spirit, I don't know, but you feel something, everybody knows that, say, oh, now your mind feels different, you, you feel different than before for some reason, you feel, oh, okay, yeah, I feel good, I feel like I'm part of this human um, society of, you know, Bahamian. So you always feel something. You feel something. Somebody say, why do you walk on back of your shoes? And you say, I don't know. I just do because they make me feel good. Then the person says, that's crazy. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. And you feel something right there. See, you feel something right there. Oh, now you feel bad. Now you feel like Pinocchio. You feel like... I'm just don't like I'm got no strings to hold me down. Pinocchio song, you feel bad. I, you feel like I, I, 
nobody. The now I feel bad. So first we got everybody knows that or the or then you feel good. Then you say nobody does. Then you feel bad, and it all it all pertains to the society of people that's on the planet of the earth. <clears throat> well, did you know some people don't ride cars? They don't drive in cars or ride cars. Driving, riding cars. Did you know that? Yeah, and there's some people that don't wear shoes. They just don't like shoes. You see where I'm trying to, you see what the point I'm trying to, we, we, we adapt emotions that's useless in this world today. They don't make any sense. And we go about our life like they do make sense. So what is that saying about us as a people? What is it saying? Well, one thing's for sure is making life fascinating. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And that fascinates things when you don't know things. It fascinates things. And the Amish people are just the tip of the people that does, think, that does things in a different and unique way. I admire them. The women are beautiful and very captivating, and I just wanted to have them around here. And that's bringing us to our brand new Amish woman here on this gathering of the colony. And her name is Janet. So everybody, welcome Janet. And here she is, right here. This is Janet. Say hi to Janet. Now, she's beautiful. Now, who do you think she's looking at? Think about that for a second. Who do you think she's looking at? We'll leave that unanswered. How about that? We'll leave that unanswered. Why bother answering that? Poppycock. Why bother answering that? Why bother? Oh, check that out. Hey, hey, babe, check, yeah, check that out. Why bother? Why bother? It, it, it's a very, like I told you before, it's very joyous creating these Amish women and bringing them on uh, the college, RVT, Rashid's video too. It's very fascinating to create, period, and to create a, a different Amish woman for episodes. It's very fascinating, and she didn't, and they don't take long to make. This one took about an hour and a half, I think it was. Yeah, up close to two hours. That's it. Yeah. And, um, very uplifting. Very, very uplifting to have created Janet. It was a pleasure to do. I like making portraits. When it matters. Yeah, when it matters. And the Amish woman around here matters. I would do paintings. But the paintings I like to do take too long to dry. And I'm afraid one day I'm going to be caught off guard. And i got to take care of something. And i got to head out or whatever. And my painting won't be dry. See, I like oil paintings. I don't like. I like. I like. We like um, oil. And oil takes forever to dry. Anybody who out there is familiar with painting, y'all know oil um, takes forever to dry. 
So I go go out and get some acrylic, and I go out and get some. Uh, Now I'll put it on the colony and it's wet. And what if I smear it? So I try to use, what I'm trying to say is, I try to use these color pencils just like a painting if it will be a painting. I, I don't, I admit though, no, I admit, I admit, I don't brush the pencil like I would a brush, a paintbrush, of course. But I try to blend the colors as if a painting, you know, as, as a real painting. Thus, it takes shorter time. And I don't have to worry about it drying. I don't have to worry about that, which is a, a, a very satisfying experience. And any, um, doodle, any doodler or sketcher knows that. That it's real crappy when you gotta wait for your project to dry, cause anything can happen, you know, while you're waiting. But one thing I'm gonna get when I when we get our house, we I'm talking to my my kid. Uh, uh, my art studio is gonna be really huge, and that way, if you have a house already and have a studio in your house, there's no, it's nothing. To have your painting dry, you have a, all you gotta do is go hang it on the wall and walk away. You know we're on a roll right now, so it's very difficult to do that. So it can smear and everything like that. So um, I try to be careful with the painting aspect of my art and creativity. So I'll, I'll have a lot of these drawings. To try to measure up to the paintings. God, I told you in the art world, they look at painters. They don't look at sketchers or drawers the same as painting. Painting is number one and all of this. Really, really unfairable. Yeah, it's an unfairable field. But I think that sketching and, and drawing should be up there with painting. I really do. I don't know why they don't. Um, look at it as such But I think it should be I guess because what we talked about How some things are easy on the eyes And they, they, they're very uh, Maybe it's more skillful with a brush Than a Than a, um, a writing ornament Maybe it's that It could be a lot of reasons why they Look at paintings different than Sketching or drawing But I really think that um, It should be in the same medium I, I Yeah we do We do so I try to, uh, when I go out and do decide to draw, I go all out and say I'm just as good as the painter. But then again, y'all see that, and I'm not going to go into doing detail about it. And I'm glad that I get to do it on these Amish women. That these Amish, I get, I'm glad I get to perfect my craft. With the Amish woman's beauty. I, I'm glad I'm able to do that. And then bring it on here. And um, elaborate how I feel about it. And so forth like that. Because I think that it helps my creativity flow. And any artist out there that does artwork. I encourage them to pick up something that they like. And go on social media and elaborate. and, and Because it will really help them out. Of their creativity flow. You know, and creating these Amish women out of nowhere is amazing. You wouldn't find these women nowhere on the planet Earth. And I'm creating them like, you know. And they're real to me. They're, they really mean something to me. They really mean something to me. They really, Amish women really mean something to me. So, I, I have great joy. Doing this, I have great joy doing this. Um, so everybody, give it up for Janet, the new Amish woman on the colony. Very, very beautiful. Amish women are very beautiful. They're beautiful and smart and talented. Intellectually, 
and they can bake great pies and cookies and stuff like that that you won't believe. Next to Jewish women. Jewish women could get down also with that um, Danish kind of cooking stuff. They could whip some ass. Hoo hoo! Make your mouth fall off your face with the pastries and stuff like that. So, good. Okay, now let's move on. Y'all heard about the shootings? Y'all heard about the shootings? How do y'all feel about those shootings? How do you feel about them? How do you feel about the shootings? Hold on one second, please. Yeah, just put that over there. We'll get it in there. Yeah, just put it over there. Just put it down over there. Okay, guys. Now, look. Listen. Oh, boy. How do y'all feel about this? You know, there's a lot of things, a lot of emotions that run through our head when it comes to world events. A lot of emotions. But one emotion that you have to remember and we have to exercise <clears throat> is patience. Guys, sometimes it seems like it's the hardest emotion in the world. Is patience. It's the hardest emotion in the world. The hardest one. Most of us that spiritually inclined in the correct way want the kingdom to come so much. And even in the scriptures, in the book of Revelation, I think it's the last scripture, it says, Lord, let your kingdom come quick. Please. And that was many years. I mean, you know how old the Bible is? So how do we feel now? We're so surpassed that that we think, like, it's never going to come. I'm just going through the motions of being a Christian. But deep down inside, I know it's never going to come. Impossible. That's bullshit. It's never going to come. I've been, I've been a Christian for so many years. I've been slaving for the Lord for so many years. I know for a fact that this kingdom is never going to come. But since I'm manning it into this lifestyle, I think I'll stay here because I have no choice. And I have no place to go. Is that your attitude? See, we're so surpassed about hoping the kingdom will come so much that that may be our attitude. But still, if rather it's our attitude or not, we still have to be patient. And they say, if some people say, Rashi, I can't be patient no more. I can't. I can't. And I will respond. We will respond. Well, I will respond. I got no more tears for Jesus. And I told y'all that a long time ago. I have no more tears for Jesus. I have no more tears for him. My suffering surpassed his suffering. You see? My suffering surpassed the normal suffering that I have no more tears for Christ. I'm just I'm just at a, a point where <sighs> I can't, I don't know what the, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. And then we look at the news events, and can we fully say that we believe everything they're saying? 
Who knows what's behind the scenes? You know what I mean? I'm not gonna... You know, I'm never gonna, um... Discuss or let loose lions or tigers. Or even bears, for that matter. Or nothing spiritual, if we have a spiritual discussion. I'm not gonna let loose anything like that. But I will say, do we really know... What's behind the scenes and behind the incidences and events that take place in society? Can we really say we know 100% what's it all about? In other words, what I'm trying to say is this. We may know about the situation, but do we really know about the situation? See, we don't really know why people do what they do. Rather, if it's the individuals that committed the crime or a group of people or an organization who's affiliated with the crime. People do things and die without revealing what kind of group they belong to. In other words, they sacrifice themselves. We don't know what's behind a lot of events that go on today. We just don't know. We just don't know. So, with that in mind, what did God say in the scripture... About tomorrow. Did he predict it for us? Like we discussed earlier? Yes he did. He said it's going to be bad. Now put the two together. You see we can't let. What happens in the world. Discourage our thinking. Or make us afraid. To go outside to the store. Or make us afraid to go shopping. Or make us afraid to do this, that, or the other. We can't do that. We can't do that. I'm going to be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. My first impulse, my first thinking. I'll be honest with you. My first thinking was, why is there so many people? Inside of a shopping mall, going shopping er, that early in the morning, because this is this is America. This is I'm from I'm from Philadelphia. I'm from Philly. Um, I don't remember anybody crowd no store like that early in the morning like that. Uh, they said it was very early. I don't know what um time that um. They changed it to whatever before. Uh, it was before twelve. It was before eleven o'clock, and that's unheard of on a Saturday in Philly, where I'm from. I mean, I don't know how they do it in Texas. I don't know, and that's where the shootings took place at in Texas. It's a Texas shooting. I don't know how they do shopping, but that early crammed up with all those people in that store that early. I think it was like nine, eight o'clock. God, that early? It was. It was. I don't know the time, guys. I I heard the time and I just said it's early, so I dismissed it. I never went back and got the correct. You know, I just know it's early. And I think it was like I may be staying corrected. I think it was like nine thirty, eight, or oh, ten o'clock in the, that early. All those people shopping. Okay. All right. It's a lot of questions. I'm not saying this or that, but it's just a lot of questions. It's just, you know, our eyes are fragile. Like I said earlier, our eyes are very fragile, and what we take in affects us as people. It affects us. It, it affects us. It affects us throughout the day. It affects us throughout the night of what we take in through our perception. Our eyes are our um, 
perception and we get reception when we take it in. You understand? And that's what our literal eyes, our spiritual eye, or the eye, if we don't use it in our spiritual literal eyes, that we take in information for our uh, for our knowledge, for our um, knowing, for our knowing. We get reception from it. The reception could be really bad, guys. We don't know what's behind things. That's what world we're living in. We don't know what's behind things. What are the odds? What are the odds? Is, 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 what are the odds if you walk outside? And come across a million dollars dollars in cash at your foot, at your feet. What are the odds of that happening? What are the odds if you walk outside and walk in the house of a rich person? What are the odds? What are the odds? If you go outside and get shot by a gun. For some reason. The shot by the gun is more prevalent than being rich. Why is that? Think about it. Why is that? Why the odds are so high with violence. Than something good. You notice we live in a world where. Everything is always bad. The news, everywhere we look, if you look, if you grab the newspaper, whatever, it's bad, 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 bad. Why? Do you have a question why? Why is that? Why is everything always bad? B-A-D. Michael Jackson did a song, bad. And Oku J did a song, I'm bad. She's a bad man, my jamma. Was that the SOS band? It's always bad, bad. Bad to the bone. Bad. Everything bad. See, we're prone to that because with our eyes we take it in and let it change our thinking that that's prevalent today. So we can watch the news and expect to hear bad, more bad stories than good stories. The feel good stories. But you notice that everything is always banned. That could create paranoiaism. They the that's the ingredients for paranoiaism. That's the ingredients for developing mental anti social behavior. Because see it's all around us, dude. So it's not your fault if you're antisocial. It's really, truly not your fault. You know why? Because it's all around us. Everywhere. Even in the movies we watch. We go to watch a movie. It's rare that you're going to see something good all the way through it. Even in cartoons. You got to have some suspense back. Even pure flick. We go watch. You gotta hear something bad in there. Of course, it might. It turns out good because it's pure flicks, but it's still the world is full of badness. We got that down pat. We got that. But here's my thing. What are the odds now? If you walk out somewhere and get hurt. What are the odds? Would you believe the odds are just as high as you walking out and finding a billion dollars being thrown into your lap? The odds are just as just as high as you walking outside getting shot with a gun than you walking outside now. And striking it big in some way. Winning a car. Winning something material. Because today to be the, the good stuff today 
has to be materialism. Have you noticed that? That's why I'm using it. What else am I going to say that's good besides gain of materialism? What? Are you going to walk outside and get younger? Think about it. Are you going to walk outside and get younger? You gonna walk outside and all your gray hair gonna turn back to its original color? What about this one? What are the odds of you walking outside and then you coming back in shape, like you exercise every day? You walk outside out of shape, then you come back in the house like you went to the gym your whole life, and you walk back vibrant and young and you got muscles, muscle tone. What are the odds? See, I can't talk like that. So I got to use that means. This means. Let me tell you what that means. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying, sweetie. That means that's what they give us. To be happy is material only. So what are the odds if you, if, if you walk outside and get a billion dollars? And I'm going to tell you a secret. I hate using that. You don't know how much I can't fucking stand using it. But hey, how else am I supposed to get to you guys? How else am I supposed to get through to you? How else? How else? They don't give us nothing else. They don't. But what we gain from materialism, that's all they give us. So I got to use that for the good thing. Everything else seems supernatural. But you notice that everything bad is physical. You could get shot. You could get mocked at. You could get laughed at. You could get hurt. You could get hit by a car. You could walk down the street and have something fall on your ass. You could trip and fall, hit your head, and go into a coma. It's all of these things that go on and on. But when it comes to good, we on the fucking prices right and shit. You can walk outside and get money. You can walk outside and get this and that and that. That's what. That's the ingredients of the world, guys. That's the ingredients of the world. That's why the scriptures say. That if God said, if you do what I tell you to do, the secrets I have for mankind are so great that this world we're going through right now is not going to come up into our heart or our mind. This world is petty, is stingy, and very, very selfish. All we have is violence and materialism. That's all we have. That's all we have. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> you can wake up one day and say, I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to exercise and lose some weight. You exercise and lose some weight. You did a good job. A fabulous job. What's the first thing somebody going to suggest you do? Uh, you need new clothes. Yeah, your old clothes, you, you can't fit them no more. You need new clothes. Instead of, hey, I'm going to take in that shirt. Or I'm going to see, can I take in that shirt. Or I probably got clothes around here that fit me now. No, you need new clothes. You get the new clothes now to fit your new body. What's next? Hmm. Wouldn't you like to go out to a club or a party? Or maybe you can go to that party now or whatever. You see? And that's going to lead to what? Materialism. Either you're going to spend at a party, spend money at a club or whatever for drinks or whatever, or somebody else is going to do it. And you're going to say, because that person did it, that person is somebody special. Hey, I like that person. He bought me a drink. He bought. Because he bought. Because he bought. He's somebody that I may be interested in because he spent. 
See, when you're at a club, when you, they give you your change back, everybody looking. They want to see how much money you got. Oh, this person got money. See, when you buy a drink, and they bring and they bring you your change that people look at, if they see a lot of bills, they say, they're pretty, that's the name of that's the club game right there. And y'all people don't say, I went to clubs, so I know. And y'all know it. See, it's all about materialism. It's a materialistic world. And there will always be a man. But the point of the matter is that's all we have. This is what I believe. This is what we believe. That there are secrets to this world that we don't know. See, this is what man created. Materialism. That's what he created. We have no other form of happiness. No other to be order to be happiness. We gotta spend money for liquor, spend money for drugs, spend money for clothes, spend money for any kind of recreation. I wanna take my child to the movie, I gotta spend money. I wanna take my child to a show, I gotta spend money. I wanna take my child I wanna go to a water park, I gotta spend money. Amusement park, I gotta spend money. They say something is free. I go down there, I want something, guess what? I gotta spend money. That's all our happiness is wrapped up in that. All the bad shit is free. <clears throat> yeah, all the bad shit in life is free. All the bad shit. They ain't understanding what I'm saying around here. They're not feeling what I'm saying around here. Are y'all under? Are y'all picking up what I'm saying around here? I'm not wasting my time on here. I never. I'm never gonna waste my time on a colony. I'm never gonna do it. I'm never. I'm warning you. I'm never gonna do it. Okay. Let's try this again. Let's do this again. I want to take my kids to the movies. What I got, what I need, what I gotta do. Buy new. Oh, I got buy new clothes. Uh, I forgot about that. I got, I got. I, how much sneakers cost? I gotta get new sneakers. I wanna. It's a hot day today. I got a tank full of gas. By the way, that gas cost me twenty dollars to fill my tank. It's not funny. It's a lot of money. They're $30 now, probably. Somebody said $20, that's all? I want to take the family... Now listen. I want to take the family to the Grand Canyon. If you're drinking something, I know you, you, you just spit it out your mouth and shower or whatever the fuck is in front of you. I know you did. I'm going to the Grand Canyon. How about that? For a vacation trip. I'm going to get the full package. All of a sudden, you see an Indian face laughing his ass off at you. For some strange reason, he just appeared in the sky. An Indian man's face disappeared laughing his fucking ass off at that one. A city person going to go to the Grand Canyon and get the full package. Yeah, old India face just appeared in the clouds laughing his ass off and then he just disappeared. We don't know why it just happened. I want to go to an amusement park and get in that water in the section that is a water park. We're going to a water park. That's what we're going to do. I think we need something, though. I think it's some taller people just in case we got to go to the bathroom. I, th I think that's what it is. I can't remember, but I do need something. I'm not the scarecrow on Wizard of Oz, but I can't remember. 
But we need something. I just don't remember what it is here. I want to go fishing. That's it. I want to. I want to go fishing. I want to go to the to this the resort where they teach you how to fish. You ever see the commercials? It's so beautiful, though. They so beautiful. They so white men flying in the air. You never see the commercials when you watch the news? White men flying on the air with a. It's like a cord that's going across the sky. And there's the white man on his arms, on his legs, out laughing. You ever see those kind of commercials? Yeah, they got, they, they got a lot of commercials like white men flying in the air. But I think, but I think you need some. I, but that's not the point. The point is you need something. It's okay if white men want to go fly in the air, hanging on cords. That's okay. Ain't no, ain't no laws against that. But you still need something. I just can't remember what it is. I just... I don't know. I don't know. Some shit. Some fucking shit. I can't remember what it is. I can't remember. I can't You want to be a white man flying in the air under court with a helmet on? That's what you want to be? I guess I'd like to get out a try. I don't know. Where could you... Oh, they say poker... They, it's one of the resorts you could go to. You want to go skiing? Up in the mountains? When are you going to do that? Next week? Oh, that's cool. That's all right. Y'all gonna get up early in the morning and go skiing, huh? We going to Outback. We going to Outback. Y'all going to ski and we going to Outback. Bring your cell phones. I can text so you. can show me some pictures. Sounds beautiful, huh, guys? But the question is, why nobody doing this shit? I guess because you need some... But you're going to walk outside to a shopping center and you might get shot by a gun and get killed. You can walk outside and get shot by a gun. With a gun. What are the odds of you come across a million dollars so you can do all those things? Going to the movies every day or what have you. Or you walking outside and get caught up with a shotgun attack. What are the odds? When a basic average person right now is nervous about going outside. You see the point? The average individual who's keeping up with the times is very nervous, are very nervous about stepping out their door and taking care of business. You know how many people that is? How many people that is make up a society of people, guys? So, what are the odds? Of that happening to you. I'm not saying it can't. But dude, I'm not going to sit up here and say that the fuck it can't. Because it's stupid. It's fucking stupid. See, we had, we as spiritual people got to believe what the scriptures say. We got to believe that God said it's going to be bad tomorrow. So no matter what we got to do, that might happen to you. That's point blank. Why does it take something to happen on TV to get the point clear to us when we know the scriptures? You see the point? 
And that's bringing us back to the Rashid portal poem, right, sweetie? That's what, don't let what happened change you. We have to stay on course. On course. See, we know that times changed than last year. Things getting worse every year, every year, every year. So five years down the line, is it going to be worse or better? You see the point? You see the point? We know it's going to be worse because not only do the scriptures say it, but that we see it also that it's going to be worse. We see that it's worse than last summer. We see that. So next summer going to be worse than this summer. You see? We have to remember these things and not let what happened in the world change us. You see? See, we go by the scriptures of the scriptures saying that tomorrow will carry on with badness. So we ain't got to be sit up here and be affected by what happens because it don't make sense when the scriptures always, all, already told us that it's going to be bad tomorrow. So why should that intervene with what we have to do? Taking care of business, going shopping, going just to the store, and going whatever. Why does, it, why does that have to intervene, guys? And it doesn't have to. It only does if we allow it to do it. Which we can't help because they highlight badness more than goodness anyway. And all the good things are material. If they do decide to highlight it, it's material. The real life is hidden away from us. But we get a glimpse of it. If you sit back and do some writing. If you sit back and do a painting. If you sit back and make yourself a dress. If you sit back and make yourself a curtain. See, people scarf at that stuff. But that's the stuff that's not materialism. See, anything materialism is cool. Money, cool. Everything is cool. But you go back and get a glimpse of godly materialism. And you see what the future holds for us if we stick to God's word. You see. Cleaning your house. Doing your laundry. Designing a shirt. Writing a story. Singing a song. Writing a song. Learning an instrument. See, people scarf at that because it's not materialistic. And that's all part of God's creation. That secret that's going to crush and put an end to all these kingdoms. And God's kingdom is going to stay in the times of definite. You see the point? So why wouldn't it be looked at and scarfed at just like God's promises promises to us. Other than the, material, other than the, the materialism that they force on us. To tell it, that tells us we got to have to be happy. God knows, see, the scripture's telling us what it takes. Somebody asks Jesus. They say, Jesus, who are truly happy? Remember that in Jesus' ministry? They say, Jesus, they say, Jesus, who who is truly happy? Jesus said in the reply, those people who know their spiritual dependency. Those people are truly happy. Because inside it, you will see the habits and the doings that man could do, that we can do, to make us truly happy and satisfied. Truly happy and satisfied. Making a cake in your kitchen. Baking a pie in your kitchen. <clears throat> It's a lot of things you can do without materialism. A lot of things. Exercising outside. Taking a walk. Going bike riding. Or just walking. Go take pictures outside. Photographs. Then come home and sketch them out. Do some recording. Get yourself a recorder. Go outside and just look around and talk about how you feel about what you're looking at. Then go home and listen to it and you'll find out not only who you are, 
but you'll find out what you can be. There's so many things you can do without materialism. So many. And whoever scarfed at them, you have to understand that they're part of this bad world that's going to continue on tomorrow bad. And adapting their thinking is going to prevent you from going outside, taking care of what you got to take of, take care of, because you're scared that you might get caught up in some shit on television. Now, my fucking beef is this, and I'm going to tell you, I've never been on television. I mean, I've been in Hollywood movies before because I'm a celebrity, but still, i never been on television like this and this and this and this. I never. I see all these. I see uh, people on television. You got your own. You got your favorite television show. What's your favorite television show? The Strangers, uh, Things, all that fucking shit. Tell the truth. You got your favorite television show, and you always thought to yourself, "I could be a celebrity. I can be. I can do that. I can." Okay, that's all fine. That's all fine. But guess what? You're never gonna be on television. And you never, and people never gonna look at you on television and say, "That's my child." Well, I know that person. Hey, look, that person's on a show. Wow. Now, here's my thing: you gonna go out shopping, then all of a sudden, guess who on television? Because of shooting. What are the odds? I never been on television all this time, but I'm gonna go outside now. I'm gonna be on television, dude. That's what you're telling me. The fuck out of here! I'm not. Wait a minute now. What are the odds now? I want my own show. I want my face on a television set. And I know for a fact, if if, if, if you know, it's never gonna happen. Right or wrong, guys. But you're telling me that if I go outside and go shopping, whatever, in the mall, whatever, now I'm on television. What? Hey, you weren't on television before. Guess what? Guess what? You might not even be on television if you go shopping. You see the point? You see the point? Don't fall prelude to bullshit. Take care of what you got to take care of, guys. Don't be afraid about the world's events because the scriptures see it. Scriptures see it. It's going to be bad. Period. It's going to be bad. That's all we need to know. Okay? Just remember that. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to the colony. Yeah, there was, baby, you are right. This was a good one. This was a good um, gathering. Don't forget about nothing we talked about. All right? And again, we want to thank. I hope y'all took notes. We want to thank our newest member, um, Amish girl, Janet. To the colony. We want to welcome. We want to thank. Not thank. But we want to welcome. <laughs> we want to welcome. Um, Janet. The newest Amish girl. To the colony. And um, I will have another Amish girl. I will create. And I do mean create. A new Amish girl. For the next colony. Guys. I will create the new Amish girl. And. uh I guess this is a done deal. What do y'all say? Getting a lighting. You know? Getting a lighting. That's what the colony is all about. Coming here to some common denominator. Some common reasoning in this God forsaken world, dude. Don't fall prelude. So let's end the colony with the Rashi poem because we got things to do and I know y'all got things to do. So here we go. <clears throat> My eyes see, but I am blind. My heart beats, but I am dead. With my hands I touch, but I cannot feel. Nonetheless, we're underwater and yet we breathe. Yes. Keep breathing, guys. Until the next gathering of the colony, this is Rashi and family signing off. Have a nice evening.